The lust to the flesh and the lust to the act. The desire of the flesh is the end. The pleasures of the outward senses. Taste, smell, touch. And the eye, the imagination to which the eye is subservient. Whatever you see, when you have that desire in you, is something that your eye can't help. Amen. Your brain, and when your mind and your imagination leads you to the place to look, we'll say pornography on, on the internet. Amen. Your eye can't help but go there when your mind and your spirit says, that's what I want to do. I want to fulfill my lust and fulfill my flesh today, and that's where I'm going. Amen. Fulfill my lust of the eye. Amen. Lust of the eye can also, if you've got the biggest house in the neighborhood or the finest car in the neighborhood or the prettiest daughter in the neighborhood or the, the smartest son in the neighborhood, all these things are pride in your life. Amen. If you flaunt them, there's nothing wrong with having them and being proud of them, but when you tell everybody, boy, my boy's way better than that boy over there is, you're bringing that kid over there down and bringing your son down to the same level as that kid is by putting him above Amen. that child. There's a very thin, fine line when you walk as Christian people as to what pride is and, and what the, what you can, how you can be proud of the accomplishments and have, you know, it's better to have somebody else pat you on the back than it is pat your own self on the back. Amen. Amen. It's a fine line we walk between the, the personal pride and just a, a proud that we've accomplished one thing or another. I'm very proud that I've been, a, I've been preaching now for uh, July made 28 years that I've been Amen. preaching. So I'm very proud of that. I, I, I preach my heart out time and time and time again. And I told the Lord when He called me to preach, and I didn't even want to preach, actually. I wanted to be a Sunday school teacher. That was my heart's desire. And I got down on, the, on my knees by my bed every evening, and I said, Lord, I'm ready to teach anytime you want me to. And it didn't work that way. I went to church one day, and I put my Bible up just to read a little bit before the church service started, and Jesus was speaking, and He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Whoa, because He has called me to preach the Gospel to the Amen. poor. Amen. I, and I broke down. I mean, it humbled me. I've never been that humble before, I don't think. But when I read that scripture and I began to work on my heart, and that night when I went home and I said my prayers, I felt the presence of evil in the bedroom. I was in there by myself praying. And really, the kids were in another bedroom. And I felt and sensed something evil that wanted to do me harm. And I didn't open my eyes because I was scared. I didn't, I didn't know what I was going to see if I opened my eyes. Amen. And I began to say, God, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, get whatever this is away from me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. And eventually, after I had cried out to the Lord for a long time, it seemed like that feeling left me of fear. Amen. And the Lord said, I've called you to preach. And I, I didn't... <laughs> Anyway, Amen. I called everybody. But I, I got me worked me up to go a long sermon and wrote it all out, research scriptures and all this and all that. Freddie lived down. My brother lived down in Florida. And I told him I was calling. He said, "Well, you preach your first time. We'll come up there." <laughs> I said, "I said, all right." So Freddie and his wife came, and we had a little old church. The church is about as wide as that. Uh, real cues are about just about as long. It was packed out with all my friends and everything. So I got behind the pulpit after all the singing was over and all the introductions were over and everything, and I said uh, nothing. Amen. I got brain luck. And I tried and I tried and I tried. I couldn't even think of anything off the top of my head. I couldn't tell a joke. Couldn't tell a story or anything. I just was locked Let in Lord, yes. with a brain cloud. Yes. So I said, well, you have to come back the next time. <laughs> <laughs> but God starts to set up humbly, honey. Yes, he does. Amen. Sometimes we get full of pride. I know that uh, one time I was going to this church, and I wondered what was the matter, and they said, well, maybe you're full of pride. I said, well, maybe I am. I didn't know it. didn't recognize it, but maybe I am. Sometimes we have so much inside ourselves that, and, and depend on ourselves and rely on ourselves so much that God is left out of the equation. Amen. Sometimes we 
want God to do something for us, but we hold on to we pray over it every day. We we continuously call out to God for the same thing. Hey, Lord, help me in this matter. Lord, help me in this matter. He says, I'm preparing the way. I'm helping you. All you have to do is stand still and wait on my deliverance. But we can't stand it. It weighs on our minds. We've got to have it now. Because we desire it, we want it. We're a fast natured people now. Amen. Everything, it's time, I'll tell you what, time has accelerated itself. I Amen. remember when I was a little boy swinging on a grapevine on top of the hill, now I'm an old man. And it hadn't seemed like it was just yesterday. Amen. Time has gone by so quickly that we can't catch up with it. Amen. But there's a time in our life that we're going to have to settle down. We're going to have to wait upon the Lord and say, Lord, I know I'm ahead of you, Lord. I know that you've already prepared the way and I'm going to catch up to you because I'm going to hold my peace and let you fight my battles. Amen. Yeah. And that's what He wants. He wants to fight your battles. He doesn't want your children or my children to go to hell. He doesn't want our families sick. He doesn't want illnesses amongst us. He wants us all to be healed and safe. And... Woo, yes. But we've got to depend on Him for it. Amen. Yes. You know, a lot of people say, well, the Lord will make a way. Oh, yeah, He will. And I heard a... Some guy got, died the other day. Oh, no, well, not so what it was. It's Tim Tebow. Y'all know who Tim Tebow is? Oh, yeah. He's a great football player. But he can't make the pros. But he's still holding out. He said, God will bless me. And then on the next... Page, it said, Tebow buys mansion in Jacksonville. So me and Ruby were talking, and I said, here, this guy's got a job now on television making millions of dollars a year. He's got all the money he'll ever need and ever want for a thing, and he just found him a brand new home in Jacksonville, got a garage full of cars and women hanging all over him, and he's preaching the gospel at every opportunity in humongous thousand member, thousands of member churches. Amen. And he's waiting on the Lord to bless him. And I was reminded of that old story about when the flood came and the old dude was up on his roof and the water kept rising and a rowboat came by and he said, no, oh Lord, no, I'm getting that thing. The Lord will make a way. So the rowboat guy went on down the road and then the motorboat came by. He looked at the motorboat and he said, no, the Lord will make a way. A little while later, here come a helicopter. The water was up to his knees, but then the helicopter guy said, I'll throw a rope down for you. He said, no, the Lord will make a way. He grounded that. In the flood. When he got to heaven, he saw old St. Pete. He said, but I waited, waited for the Lord to make a way. He said, well, the Lord sent you a rope and a motor boat and a helicopter and you turn them all in. You know, you've got to look for where the blessings come from. you got to to look to see where, you know, you might not want to get in a little old pinky rowboat in a flood. But if God provides it for you, I guarantee safety in it. Amen. We have to trust the Lord. Amen. We can't trust our own judgment anymore. My judgment, if I had had good judgment, I would have needed to get saved to begin with. Amen. There you go. But I did. My judgment was have fun while you can. And laugh and sing and dance like the grasshopper. Don't stir nothing up for the future. And then die. Amen. That's where I was going to be. Worldly arrogance. That's a that's word. Tebow is. He may not even understand that. He might not see that. You may not see that the way I did. But that, to me, that's that's simply worldly arrogance. He's taken for granted what he has and still yet showing it off and still yet, still yet trying to be humble enough to tell people the Lord will make a way for you. He'll make a way for me too. Well, I'm sorry to say, he's already made a way for you. That's right. Amen. Brother. Sometimes what we want, our greatest desire, it may be not what God wants us to have. That might be your total destruction. Amen. You might be looking on somebody with lust. You might be looking at another woman outside your marriage or another man outside your marriage with lust. And that might be the very thing that you want and your heart beats a little bit faster when you see them and you want to be with them so bad that you can't hardly stand it. And then when you get with them and you get rid of your wife and your children, you got a new girlfriend. It's the same thing. Amen. Just like buying a car. You get a brand new car today, and after a week or two, you'll be riding down the road, and you'll say, man, it's just a car. Looking on the inside of it, it it's nothing but a car. No matter if it's a Corvette or a, a Mustang or a, one of the you know, one of the good, real nice cars that I like. It's just simply a car. But your lust will get you to a place where the outside of everything looks wonderful. 
Yeah. Oh yeah, I've got to have it. That nightclub looks great. Look at all those lights flashing and people sitting out there laughing and drinking stuff and hear music in there. Boy, that looks like a good place to go and a good thing to do. Amen. Destruction. Can't find a wife in a bar. You can, but most often it don't work. Sometimes it works. But if that's what you're looking for, you go from one to another, it won't work for you, I don't think. And of course, physical gratification. We all know what that is. This is physical gratification for me is eating too much. I don't drink too much because I don't drink alcohol, but I drink too much of other things. So eating and stuff like that's my downfall. I can't control it sometimes, and I need to. Other people's physical gratification, I said this one time before and several times to other people that I know, my worst, worst thing you could do around me is if you're a man who comes in my church simply to hit on my sisters in the church. I will knock you out. Amen. I mean, I really will. That's the worst thing that you can do. Women come into church sometimes, a lot of times, without their spouses. Men do too, but with women, it's a different matter. Women come in to pour their heart out to the Lord. Most women have a tender spirit. I know my wife does, and my, my mother, and all the people that I'm really well acquainted with do. They come into the church to pour their heart out to God, to be in a place of sanctuary, in a place of safety. Yeah, amen. Sometimes comes in, puts her arm around her neck, tells them how wonderful they are, and begins to sweet talk them. First thing you know, your sister's gone, and that thing's gone right along with it. Amen, brother. Worst thing you can do in my eyes. Don't do it here. If you have a mind to. Amen. Bless you, Lord. My meddling in somebody's head. 